Father, we thank you. I want you to remain standing. Lift up your hands toward heaven right now. For those who are sitting, I want you to stand. Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. Have your way right now. I say have your way in our midst. May we anointing. Because, 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 the power of God. Help the people, help the people right now. The power of God. The power of God. May the power of God swim through this place. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray. We have come to magnify your name as African. I pray that a special anointing may follow this meeting right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Father, baptize your people with the Holy Ghost. Touch them with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Stop the music. Stop the music. Something is happening right now. I feel the wind of the Spirit in this place. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place. Hey! In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Woo! Help, help the people. In the name of Jesus. The anointing of God is present. The power of God is here. Woo. I thank you. Woo. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My Father, my Father. My Father, my Father, this time belongs to you. Thank you for your special move. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we give a hand to our Lord? Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. As I said earlier, this is just an introduction. I'm here like uh, John the Baptist to prepare the way. Hallelujah. I'm here to prepare the way so that tomorrow we'll have the giants of faith standing on this platform. I can't wait for that. You see, when the platform is occupied by people that are anointed, something shifts in the atmosphere. Listen, we need to understand the dynamics in this. God will not bring this type of people together just for a joke. I believe that there's a breaking of ground. And I believe that there's a shift in the atmosphere that will cause the continent to emerge again. Hallelujah. This is just a prophetic act. We're talking about SCC. We're talking about African Convergence. Conference. Say to your neighbor, African Convergence Conference. Now we talk about a time for transformation. A time for... Oh, talk to me. You know me now. A time for... Okay. We talk about a time for transformation. Hallelujah. And I want to just reflect on the components on the topic. We're talking about time. I was... Thinking, what is time? We're talking about time. What is time? Time is a plan, a schedule, or an arrangement when something should happen or be done. So, when we say a time for transformation, we are talking about a prearranged arrangement or a schedule or something that it, it's an ordained moment where something should happen. Now, we talk about transformation. Now, the word transformation, when you talk about the word transformation, we talk about 
the mark of a change in form, nature, of appearance. Transformation is also a process by which one figure, expression, or function is converted into another or of a similar value. So we're talking about a transformation. So we are talking about a process by which Africa will take on another form. Hallelujah. And when you talk about time, you must understand that there is, we're talking about a time, but that if you study further, there is what we call the chaos moment. Hallelujah. The chaos time is where God, is where destiny and time meet. So when we talk about the chaos, we are talking about a place where God intervenes. It's a place where God stands up from his throne and he said, now. And I believe that Africa is in a Kairos moment. Hallelujah. We are in a Kairos moment. And God is about to bring a move in Africa. I believe that something is changing in Africa. Hallelujah. Now, I was reflecting, what is, why are we called Africans? How many wonder about that? Why, why do we call that? Why, why are we called Africans? Who gave the name Africans? I was reflecting and I started to search a bit. And I realized that the name African appeared the first time the Romans gave us that name. It was not a name that we chose. The name was given to us. And I went deeper. I started to study what is Africa? What is the meaning of the name Africa? If the origin is from the Romans. And then I found out that Africa may come from a word that is called afar. Afar means dust. Can you hear that? Afar means dust. Or Africa may come also from a word that is called Afri. Afri means tribes or people living in a place. And, uh, and the first time the Romans gave that name to the northern people of Africa, the, 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 the people that they found in northern Africa, they call them, they, probably they call them the tribe living here. And then I went into the Greek and I understand that the word for Africa in the Greek, which is Afric, means cold. And the Latin word for Africa is Africa, which means sunny. So the description of Africa means nothing. It's a place of dust, a place of sun, a, a, a hot place. That's how they describe us. Hallelujah. And if you understand that a name follows a destiny. Remember, God did not give this continent the name Africa. Remember in the Garden of Eden, when God created the, the earth, and he created men, kind, and he put them on the ground. The Bible says, and God asked Adam to name the animals. So each name that Adam, Adam gave was the name of the animal. So God did not give a name to our continent. He gave us the grace to name the continent. But unfortunately, Africa could not name itself. Africa was named by people not living in Africa. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? In the Bible, names are very important. Every name carries a destiny. Now, I'm not saying we must change the name of Africa, but I want to explain to you something tonight. That this name Africa was not chosen by us. It was imposed. Hallelujah. And you see, when they called us Africa, we were reduced to dust. Or we are reduced to a continent where it's just hot. We are reduced to a continent where they say it, there is no cold there, there is no winter. But, but I realize there is winter here. They didn't come to South Africa. These people never traveled to South Africa. So they never knew that there is winter in South Africa. Hallelujah. We are special people. We are special. Say to your neighbor, we are special. The, the place that God named in the Bible, it's amazing. When God created men, the Bible says, and God put a garden in Eden, and there he put the men that he has created. And the word Eden means paradise. The word Eden, hallelujah, the word Eden means Great delight, happiness, contentment, or bliss. 
So when God named a place, he named it a place of pleasure. So God did not name a place of chaos. He named a place of pleasure. Hallelujah. And you know what? If we need to transform Africa, we need the transformation from the roots. Amen. If we need to transform this continent, we need to go to the roots and examine ourselves and, and ask ourselves, are we going to comply to the description that they gave us? Or are we going to rise above what people tell us? You see, in life, you can either comply to what people say to you, or you can rise above the level of imitations. Now, when we say we are African, it's an exciting thing. But you must rise about the level of Africans. I believe a time has come for us to understand that we are not just Africans. We are people created by God to enter destiny. Hallelujah. So there is a problem here. You see the problem of Africans. Africans are very strange people. We are all African, but Africans are very strange people. There are some things that Africans do that only Africans can do. You see, Africa has been marginalized. Africa has been spoken down to. Africa has been seen as a lower continent. Now, they talk about the third world countries. And I say, but where are the second world countries? You cannot count from one to three. So somewhere, somehow, there must be a second world country. But remember, they do not want us to be close to them. So they say we are first world and we are third. <laughs> I refuse. In the name, I refuse to be boxed. You see, who, who is classifying what? According to who? The first thing that must change is our mindset. You see, Africans are very funny people sometimes. When they get to power, you need to dig them out, otherwise they don't go. You see, they get there, they say, this is the president. He takes roots until he dies. You see, next to us, I don't want to name the country, the president has been for 30 years. He just won election again. After 40, 30, more than 30 years, he's still running for presidency. You can only see that in Africa. They can't work anymore. They are still president. <coughs> he's, he's caught up in blatant corruption. He defends himself not to go. That is Africa. You see, even when you take soccer, in Europe, a, 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 a coach will lose a game and resign. African lose a game, he said, tomorrow we'll do better. He is refusing to resign. You see, a mindset is very important. The continent of Africa is not cursed. The only curse we have is our own mindset. Can I submit to you that if today we have to change place, let's say if we could do this, we take all the Americans and we shift them to Africa. We take all the Africans, we shift them to America. In 20 years, we'll run there. We'll run to Africa. I don't even... Africans are swimming to go to Europe. Taking small boats. <laughs> you see them on TV, some die. But no, they're going to Europe. Because they believe we are cursed. No, we are not cursed. I say we are not cursed. We are not cursed. The only problem is our mind. Say to your neighbor, mindset. When you, have, when you grow on the dust of poverty, your mindset is twisted. Because you find your value in wealth. Self-wealth equals wealth. That's why in Africa, when people are a bit rich, they think they have it all. 
put somebody in position today, he will change his talk. The way he relates to you will change. Because he thinks the position de defines who he is. Listen, tonight I'm here to just speak to you a bit about this thing. I believe that God is saying that the place is not cursed. I believe God is telling us tonight, if we can change our mindset and come to a place of understanding, this continent will change. You see, I was telling somebody, I say, an African, you show him a forest, he sees the trees. The next thing he sees is firewood. <laughs> he just wants to cut the fire and make wood. You take them to a national park. <laughs> they kill the animals. They eat everything. From the monkeys to the snakes. <laughs> we, 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 we were brought up this way. For us, be simple. You see a tree, don't think of anything else. Firewood. When we are angry, we, burst, we burn buses. My son is nine years old, he is eight years old. He asked me one time, we were looking at the TV, and people were striking, we were burning buses, and he said, but tomorrow when they go to work, what are they going to use? I said, they are so angry, they don't want to go to work anymore, so they burn the bus. <laughs> Students are breaking the amphitheaters where they study. They break all the materials. Then they say, we can't study. But you broke it yesterday. Are you quiet now? You qui I can say this. If the Americans say that, you say he's undermining us. But I live here in this continent. I know what is going on. I believe that we must come to a place of change. Value what is valuable. We must come to a place to understand that our destiny does not belong to America. Can I say to you something? Help is not coming from abroad. Help is coming from above. Now the African has a begging mentality. Even, even black African, when they see a white man, they see money. Yeah, they will see you with a white man. The first thing they think you're working for him. One time we went somewhere and I was with, my, my, with Leon and some people and I was the only black African. And when we came down, the men standing there thought I was working for them. He was greeting them, he ignored me. But we went because I was in the trip. So when we went, he was asking them questions. I said, no, you, we can't answer you. He said, why? They said, that man that you pass is the one that you must talk to. He said, then God is doing something. I said, no, you are stupid. God is not doing anything. You fail. Listen, you fail to have discernment. Because your discernment is limited to the color of the skin. You don't know that beyond the skin there is something deeper. I carry the Holy Ghost. It's not about my skin. It's who I carry. I carry the power of God. I carry the Holy Ghost. Therefore, it's not about my skin. It's about who I carry. People are limited. People are limited because they limit themselves to their complexion. But the funny thing, now white people want to become black. You don't understand. They are, they, they are lying in the sun. <laughs> and black people want to become white. There is all kind of products. When you see a lady, you don't know if she was born light in complexion or she became. <laughs> Stop trying to be somebody else. I want you to be proud of your complexion. 
I want you to be proud of who you are. If you have a big nose, so be it. Be proud of it. Hallelujah. God has a dream for the continent. I tell you, God did not make this continent to be the last one. There is no such a thing as Africa is the last continent. I was reading a bit about Africa, and I discovered uh, when they classify the continent, Africa is the second largest continent with more than 4 billion people. But Africa is one of the poorest continents. Poor in the sense of financial means. But Africa is the richest continent in the sense of minerals, wealth underground. Why do you think God will hide the richest in Africa? God is hiding uh, the richest in Africa because the generation of Africans will come and their mind will be open and they will be able to exploit the, 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 the ground that God has given them. I believe that for Africa to arise, you need to marry our own lands. We need to come in terms with our land. We need to come to understanding. Look at, listen. When Adam and Eve fell into sin, the Bible said God cursed the ground. God cursed what? Because God understood that what makes you is your land. God cursed the ground. And I believe that for us to arise, the first thing we need to do is to bless our own land. It's for us to marry this land and ask for wisdom as how to exploit what this land. Because we are rich. We are just ignorant, but we are rich. People have seen the richest in Africa. Why do you think people come from Europe, from all the continent, to come and colonize us here? It's not that they love us. They like what we have. And they come to take it. But I want you to know that God is setting up a generation of people that will march through this land and declare that Africa is not the least of the continents. You see, God made promises to Africa. In the book of Psalm 68, verse 31, the Bible says something I want to read for you quickly in Psalm 68, 31. You can't read with me because I believe you don't. You know, it's dark very bit. We are in Africa. Aren't we in Africa? He says, people will come from Egypt and Cush will submit herself to God. Now, if you, if you are acquainted to Bible study, you will realize that Cush is a name that sometimes refers to the whole continent of Africa. Not just one place sometimes. Now, it's a Kush will submit to God. Kush will submit to God. I want you to say Kush will submit to God. You must understand that the redemption of the land comes from our submission to God. You see, Africa grew up on the foundation of idolatry. You see, when you talk about the founding fathers of America, you know they dedicate the land of America to God. You understand that? Therefore, it doesn't matter what happens in America, God has his hand upon the land. Our fathers didn't dedicate this land to, Africa, to God. They did the other way around. They dedicated the land to the other master. I don't want to say his name. You see, from that moment, we need to come to terms with this fact that unless we turn to God, all this thing we are talking about is nonsense. The continent needs to renounce the deeds of darkness and embrace the deeds of the cross. Hallelujah. I believe that the moment we turn to God, God will unlock the mysteries 
and we'll come to a place where we'll understand that whatever was hidden was for our benefit. I believe that if God did not hide some of our resources, the European would have taken everything. But God is hiding. Look, people ask, where is the gold of Solomon? It's in the Bible. The Bible tells us where the gold is. If you read your Bible in the book of 1 Kings 14, 25 to 26, the Bible says that the gold of Solomon was transported to Egypt. So the gold of Solomon is in Africa. Hallelujah. I don't know if the people that came to colonize us didn't take it, but <laughs> the Bible tells us the gold of Solomon was transferred to Africa. Hallelujah. So the first thing we must do is to turn to God. Acknowledge that there is no any other God beside God. And acknowledge that the God of this world are fake. There is only one God. There is only one through which we might be saved. It's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Africa needs to come to terms with that. Listen, I've been a, a, around in Africa. I've confronted the power of darkness sometimes. Which doctors have come to salvation? People that, that worship ancestors have come to salvation. Uh, one time we went to pray for somebody some years ago. And uh, I was in a crusade and a witch doctor came. And she was a very renowned witch, witch doctor, which I didn't know. She came and I lay hands on her and she fell to the ground. And when she fell, she was manifesting and she was suffocating. So she asked us to cut all the traditional things that were around her hands and feet. So we, 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 we went ahead and cut all this thing. And around 10 p.m., the lady phoned the pastor's wife that was hosting me. And she said, I want you to bring my stuff back. And we said, why? She said, the snake is standing here, he's talking to me. He said, if I don't bring it back, it will kill me. So I said, ma'am, can you give a cell phone to the snake? I want to talk to it. <laughs> if he can talk to you, let it talk to me. <laughs> she was so angry, she dropped the phone. The next day we went there. When I stepped into that place, bones, all kinds of mooties, all kinds of charms. So I stretched my hand and I grabbed one of them. And I said, what is this? This is nonsense. So I threw it to the ground, and the lady says, you guys are wasting my mooties. I say, if they can be wasted, you better leave them. Because Jesus can be, cannot be wasted. I said, Jesus cannot be wasted. When I went in the morning, the snake was nowhere to be found. I say, number one, I'm a snake killer in the spirit and in the natural. So if I found you here, you are in trouble. Doesn't matter who you are. You need to understand that everything that Africa worship are not God at all. If you are here and you come from a family where they worship ancestors, I want to tell you that you must get rid of this thing. It cannot help you. In fact, if they could help themselves, they wouldn't die in the first place. How can you ask somebody that is dead to help you? Africa needs to turn to God. Say, Africa needs to turn to God. Now, the people that are in God need to turn to ways that are not of God. You see, only in the continent of Africa, you see men of God jumping on people like cows. You don't understand what I'm saying. The anointing is not to trample upon people. African has come to a place where we're going back to witchcraft. And also because of you and me, you cannot get healed by faith. You need to drink something. You need to see something. You need to wear something. You need to put a picture somewhere. Jesus cannot save you anymore. It's the face of your man of God. Shame on us. I say shame on us. 
We need to change. Say we need to change. We need to know that Jesus is enough. I said Jesus is enough. We're going back to witchcraft in the church. We're going back to witchcraft. People are selling soap. They're selling oil. They're selling all of this in the name of Jesus. It's the witchcraft, African witchcraft that has entered the church. We are here to say a new generation of Christians are working up now. I say a new generation of people that proclaim only the name of Jesus are, are, are rising right now. I want you to join the movement of faith that says Jesus is enough. Nothing else. I don't need something under my bed. I don't need to wear stuff. I need to wear Jesus. I need Jesus. I say I need Jesus. I need Jesus or nothing. I need Jesus or nothing. We need to change our ways. Politicians need to understand that politics is not a way to manipulate people. We need to change our ways. I say we need to change our ways. We need to change our ways. We need to understand that we don't need to manipulate people. Politics is not a means of dominion. Actually, the act of politics is to help other people. But now politics has become a means of wealth, self-gain, selfishness. And it's time for us to say no, no, no. If you are here and you are a young politician, I want you to know that God is not calling you into politics so that you can dominate people and you can be corrupt. God is calling you so that you can be a light. God is calling us so that you can show the way where there is no way. God is not putting you in power so that you can remain there forever. God will put you in power for a season so that you can show his glory. So if you want to be a politician, know this, that you are coming to serve the people. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 33 verse 12, the Bible tells us that bless is a nation that has God, that the Lord is God. If God is a God of South Africa, South Africa will be blessed. But if God is not a God of South Africa, South Africa cannot be blessed. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chose for his inheritance. Hallelujah. I believe that we must come to that place where we treasure God. Now, I want to finish with this. Like I said, we just entered the thing for tomorrow. How many people know the story of Agar? When Agar was chased away by her rival, Sarah. How many people know the story of Agar? I don't see your hands. Sure, this thing is blinding me here. I see no one. I'm, I'm speaking, speaking by faith, faith that, that I'm, I'm speaking. speaking. <laughs> <laughs> are you there? Yes. Make, Make me a sign, sign that, that you are there. I'm trying to see. Ah, you're still there. You're still there. So I'm not speaking to, 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 to the empty chairs. I thought you just walk out. You're still there. Now, the story of Agar. The Bible says that Abraham took a wife. And her name was Agar. He took a wife because Sarah could not, or Sarai could not conceive. He took a wife, and Agar was an African lady because she came from Egypt. Hallelujah. Now, Agar had Ishmael. And the Bible says, in the process of time, Sarah also became pregnant and got Isaac. And something happened. I believe that Sarah caught Ishmael mocking Isaac. And why would Ishmael mock Isaac? I believe, the Bible does not say that, but what I believe is that Ishmael was busy telling Isaac that I am the big brother here. 
When daddy dies, everything comes to me. You will have nothing. Sarah got worried. And Bobo says that the child of a slave will not inherit with the child of a chosen lady. Agar was chased away. The Bible says Agar took Ishmael and they went away and Agar sat. And she was thirsty and Ishmael was thirsty. And she put Ishmael away and she was sitting here. She didn't want to see the death of Ishmael. And as she was crying, the angel of the Lord called out. The Bible says, and the angel of the Lord says, I've heard the cry of a baby or I heard the cry of a young boy. Amen. And, and, and that's funny because Sarah also was crying out to God, but God did not hear Agar. God heard the child. Now, why? Why would God hear the child and not Agar? Because God had the covenant with father of the child. Hallelujah. So because by covenantal right, God could hear the child from heaven. Now, I'm coming to this point. That because of the covenant of Christ, with us Africans that are born again, the whole continent can cry, but God will only hear the cry of his own people. So this conference, don't despise this conference. Because we are crying out to God, and God will hear our cry because of a covenant. Somebody say, I'm a child of a covenant. Because of a covenant of Jesus, God will hear our cry. Now, the second aspect of it, the Bible says, and God opened the eyes of Agar, and she saw a stream of water, or she saw water, a spring. Now, what does it tell us? When we cry out to God, the answer will be the release of the Holy Spirit. Ah. When we cry out to God as African, God will open our eyes and will move up in the Spirit. That's why there is a generation of African that understand the heart of God, that are about to move in the power of the Holy Ghost like never before, because God has heard the cry of those who love him. A generation of people that cry out to God day and night. The Bible says, God opened the eyes of Agar and she saw the spring. I'm praying tonight that God may open your eyes. That you may see the spring of the Holy Ghost. You see, great things happen at the well. You see, Jesus met the lady of Samaria where? At the well. Moses, when he was running away from Egypt, where did he meet the daughters of Jethro? At the well. You follow me? When Jacob was running away from Esau, where did he meet Rachel? Oh, talk to me. Where did he meet him? Uh, meet her at the well. The well is a place of divine exchange. And I believe that the well is a symbol of the Holy Ghost. So where we will meet our destiny is at the feet of the Spirit of God. The moment we understand that the Holy Ghost is not given just to shake. Can, can, can somebody say an amen? If you shake with the Holy Ghost and you have no wisdom, you are a fool. Hallelujah. Because every shaking should be an impartation. And every impartation should create something deep inside of you. You see, you carry wealth. You carry greatness inside of you. You carry something inside of you. You carry the ancient of days. God has come and tabernacle in you through the Holy Ghost. God has come and chosen you as a dwelling place. You have become a living tabernacle. You have become a living, a living altar. You have become a living ark. The ark of a covenant. Because in the ark of a covenant was a scroll, the word. And now, now the word dwells in you. You are born to change something. I say you are born to change something. I say you are born to change something. You are born to change something. You are not just born as an accident. 
Tonight I want to stir you to know that greatness dwells in you. I want to tell you that the issue of death is dwelling in you. I want to tell you that God has given you everything possible to be a success. It, it's not possible that you fail because Christ in you, the hope of glory. I believe that Christ in you is not just in you so that you can go to heaven. I believe that the anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon you right now uh, so that you can transform your environment into an Eden. I believe that God has sent you forth and set you forth in this continent so that people may know that when you are anointed, there is a way out. You are stuck until you are anointed. I say you are stuck until you are anointed. When the anointing of God comes upon you, you are not stuck anymore. Because you are not functioning on men's power, you are functioning on God's power. You are not functioning with the abilities of men, you are functioning with God's abilities. You are not thinking with men's abilities, you are thinking with God's abilities. Everything that touches your hands can prosper. I say everything that touches your hands can prosper. You must know that there is no place that is cursed. There is only people that are not wise enough. Give this continent to people that can think and you will not recognize it. I say you will not recognize it. I say give it and you will not recognize it. I believe that God is calling us back to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You see, the fellowship with the Holy Ghost will, will lead you to higher dimensions. I say the fellowship with the Holy Ghost will lead you to higher dimensions. The reason why Christians are frustrated today Today is because they don't have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. People are praying. People are desperate. People have come to a place where they don't know what to do anymore. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is not active in their lives. When you get the power of the Holy Ghost, you cannot draw back. You cannot backslide when you have the power of the Holy Ghost upon you. I say you cannot backslide when the power of the Holy Ghost is with you. Listen, there is a kind of anointing that belongs to Africa. I don't know if you understand that. There, there is an anointing in Africa, Africa that, that no any other continent has. has. You are quiet. <laughs> you think I'm making it up so easier. I, I say that there is a kind, kind of anointing, of anointing that African has. It custom made. It has been customized. It only fits Africans. There is a kind of anointing that only fits Americans. But we have a kind of anointing. There is an anointing for each continent. Hallelujah. There is an anointing for each continent. But the one of Africa is an anointing for the supernatural. I say it's an anointing to walk in the supernatural like never before. It's an anointing to do unusual work. Listen, when God created man... He said, I will make him a helper, a helper, what? Suitable to him. Do you, you remember that scripture? And you know that the word suitable means something that is custom made. That only you can wear. So it means, if you have two wives, one you stole. One does not belong to you. Because there is only one that is custom made to you. Uh, that's why the Bible says if you find a wife, you have found a good thing. Because it's custom made. <laughs> I, was looking at, I was looking at a documentary. And uh, a basketball player of the NBA, they went to him, he had, I think, a Porsche. And he said to the journalist, if you can climb in and drive, I'll give it to you. The journalist was so excited, he climbed in. And his feet were not touching the petrol. <laughs> I mean, the leg of a guy is like 1.5. <laughs> you come in with 80 centimeters. You want to drive it. He said, if you can only drive it, I'll give it to you for free. Because there are some stuff that are only customized. It's like that with your anointing. You cannot copy the anointing of somebody else. You will die in the wilderness. There's a kind of anointing that is customized to you. You can't copy the anointing of somebody else. You need to be who you 
you are. Africa needs to be itself. We can be Europe. We can only be Africa. No, I cannot preach like TD Jakes. I cannot be Joseph Prince. I can only be me. You see, when David was going to war, the Bible said Saul gave him his equipment. David walked and he said to Saul, this is too big. Because David understood, if you go to war with somebody else's weapon, you die in war. You need to go with what fits you. You need to go with what belongs to you. Because when you go, you know the instrument. You've been trained with it as instrument. You know how it works. You cannot take the platform and become somebody else. You will die in the wilderness. The devil will kill you. But if you come and you are trained by the Holy Ghost, when you come on the pulpit, the, the, the anointing that is customized to you will start to work. I'm praying that Africa may know that we can never become America. We will become who God wants us to be. I want you to know that we, we will never become Europe. We will, we will become who God wants us to be. Yes. God did not create us. You know the, the problem why Africa is confused? It's because we inherited everything from America, from Europe. We don't even know what democracy is. That's why we're killing each other. There must be a pattern for Africa. I said there must be a pattern for Africa. And I'm praying for that download that God may show us the pattern of politics in Africa. That we will not try to mimic people. Are you here with me? Are you still here with me? Amen. Say I'm an African. And I'm proud to be African. Say I'm an African. And I'm a, I'm a success. Say I have a kind of anointing that the world is waiting for. You have an anointing that the world is waiting for. Something about to break forth in Africa. That, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Something about to break forth in Africa. That will go from this continent and touch our continent because God is with us. I said, something about to change. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. My father always tell me, if you are poor, be the only one that knows that. Let everybody know who are rich. He said, when you come out of the house, walk like a rich man. Talk like a rich man. Behave like a rich man. I said that, why? He said, when you are behaving like that, you are calling it upon you. Like you are anointed. Amen. Don't talk like that. I don't know if I'll pray the person. Shame on us. Say, so bring me that person now. God will move. Say, so bring me the person now. God will move. Somebody had broken legs in many places. And I was preaching like that, and they told me, the person said, if you can come, she will be healed. I said, that's what I can do. Yes. I walk into that home. I took the estate and I saw the screws everywhere in the bones. I said, that's a small business for my God. I put my hands on and in less than five minutes, she was running around the yards. Why? Because I was confident in the Lord. If Africa is confident in the Lord, no continent will be able to suppress us. We can sit, sit at the UN and say, we have come here to give answers. We don't come to beg. You want answers? Call us. Uh -huh. We don't go to the UN to be the smallest guys. We go to the US to show wisdom. Hallelujah. And if you are here and you, you are wondering about which way to go, and you don't know Jesus, I want you to know, I want you to know tonight that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. That no one goes to a father except for him. Amen. If you are here and you want to accept Jesus, I don't see you, but can you lift up your hand by faith? 
If there is anyone here that wants to receive Christ tonight, can you lift up your hands from where you are right now? Right now from where you are. And if you lift up your hand, can you stand up? Can you stand up from your seat? I want to see you. Please, please don't, don't, don't put up your hands now. Stand up from where you are. In the name of Jesus. There's a God in heaven that answers prayers. There's a God that answers by fire. There's a God told me that the time is shifting. But now you heard that my name is Elijah now. Huh? Now if you call me Elijah, I'm not answering anymore. Call me Elijah. Hallelujah. Because God told me that there is a the time of manifestation of the God of fire. And he will answer us by fire. So, like I said, I don't see you. Can you do me a favor? Come to the red line so that I can pray with you. Otherwise, I'll be just praying in the... Please come, come, come. Give them a big hand. Just come from wherever you are. Step out, step out, come. Come and receive Christ tonight. It's your time. It's your time for miracles. It's your time for grace. Come, come, wherever you are. Step out, step out and come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus. I say come to Jesus. It's your time. It's your time. Come to Jesus. The Lord is good. Come to Jesus tonight. Come to Jesus tonight. He has a plan for you. He has a destiny for you. Come to Jesus tonight. Tonight is a night of salvation. The Bible says if you heard his voice, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Come to Jesus. It's not over yet. Amen. Yes. The Spirit is telling me there are some people that are still holding on. And you need to come. So that I may get the ready to pray for you. Just come. Just come. Just come. Amen. Just come. Yeah. I don't make out call by tongues. I make out call by knowledge. Come, come, come. There, there, there is a lady, your husband left you. Come, come. Your husband left you. Come, you are here. You need to be born again. Come, come quickly. Come quickly to the altar call. I say come quickly to the altar call. It's your time, it's your time. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Can we give a big hand to our Lord? Come, 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 come. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray with you. Lift up your hands and say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. I pray right now. That you may cleanse me from all my sins. Wash me clean. With the blood of Jesus. Today, I confess Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I open my heart to you. Forgive all my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Thank you for your word says. If I confess my sin, you are just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Give me your spirit right now. Fill me with your grace. In Jesus' name. You stand there. The Holy Ghost just told me that there are some people that backslide it. You backslide it. It's like you, you, your walk with God. You, you stop walking really with God. And you want to rededicate your life to God. Can you stand up and come also? Tonight you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Come, stand up. Please. Stand up. Stand up. Can we give a big hand to our Lord? You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. If you say, I want to go fresh with Jesus again. I want to go fresh with Jesus again. So, uh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not the only one lady. I'm talking about people here that, that know I'm talking about them. I want you to come and, and, and stand here and, 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 and rededicate your life to Jesus because it's time. It's time. We don't have much time anymore. It's time. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, if you have... Let me pray. Lift up your hands, lady, in the name of Jesus. I pray that the power of God may go upon you right now, that the Spirit of the Lord may take over right now. Let the Holy Ghost 
Yet is let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you right now for a dedication and a commitment to Jesus, to Jesus, to Jesus, to Jesus. Hallelujah. Give a hand to her. Thank you so much. Welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. Follow Evangelist Israel. He will just talk to you right now. Follow him. Hallelujah. Can you get to give our land to Jesus? We almost finished now. We will get away from here right now. I want you to stand up. And if you are sick, I want you to lift up your hands from where you are. Are you sick? Those who are sick, you are sick. I want you to come and stand in front of me here. I will not go and lay hands on you, but stand there. Come. Those who are sick, stand here. Do you believe God for a miracle tonight? You are at the right place in this place of miracles. Do you believe God for a miracle tonight? I'm just introducing this time. Tomorrow is another time. Do you believe God for a miracle? God will do a miracle. Do you believe him for a miracle? Hey, that's right. Do you believe him for a miracle? You will get a miracle right now. The power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I stretch my hands upon these people, I command you right now that every sickness, every disease may depart from them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. Right now, the anointing of God is coming upon you. Doesn't matter the sickness you suffer from, the anointing is coming upon you. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed in Jesus' name. Can you receive your healing right now? I say, can you receive your healing right now? Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Say, I receive. Say, I receive. My sister will be catches her. Look at me. Can you receive your healing right now? Leave those catches and walk. Leave those catches and walk. Walk, 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 walk. walk. Get it. Walk. Receive the anointing. Help me. Receive the anointing. 
anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Listen, people are going to be attacked by the Holy Ghost right now. On the hose, on the hose. It, it's going to, it's going to go like this in the name of Jesus. People are going to be touched by the power of God right now, wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. In the name, receive, 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 receive the power of God. Receive the power of God. Woo! Look at the lady there in, in black, standing just in front of her. This lady, no, yeah, you, looking at me, this lady, yes, there is a divine appointment with you tonight. There is a divine appointment with you. I've seen your heart crying for more of a spirit. You see, there have, there have been some stuff that have delayed your, your walk. They have delayed your walk. They have delayed your walk. In terms of relationship, you've been delayed. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord will set, will set you free. And He will set you free. The delay and the thing that are holding you back, I break it today in the name of Jesus. 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 Father, thank you for who you are. We give you praise and adoration for your goodness. Hallelujah. Can we be, give a big hand to our Lord? Can we give a big hand to our Lord and say, God, is, Jesus is Lord. I say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I say, Jesus is Lord.